All right, this, this I just have to share with all of you. This is the power supply. This is the GSC Model 4R, 4 amp regulated power supply that you saw in my uh, last regulated power supply video where I fixed this trip light 7 amp power verter supply. And the thing that was keeping me out of this was, of course, the fact that it had uh, square head, or I believe, as many of you pointed out, Robertson drive screws on it that were holding it together. Now, interestingly, I told all of you that um, I didn't know where this thing was made, and unfortunately I lied to you because right down here underneath the power switch, it very plainly states, made in USA. So I guess I was having a blind moment or something. I was certainly being dumb. But speaking of dumb, look at this thing. This, this is... I tell you what, sometimes I've been inside something and I've wondered if it's a joke, and <laughs> I'm wondering that here because, quite honestly, this is a simple design, but there are a couple things that stick out about it like a sore thumb. First of all, folks, there's absolutely no fuse on this thing. None whatsoever. So if anything goes wrong with this thing, you're going to have to rely on your household wiring protection to catch it for you, or presumably you'll notice it's smoking. I don't know. Number two, look at these contacts. Look at how close these are to one another. Now, the average person is just going to twist some copper wires together. They're probably not going to put the proper spade lugs on there or something and um, make, the, make a connection that's good quality. So there's an opportunity for strands to touch one another. And in fact, just prior to my cleaning this up, there were strands on this terminal down here that were definitely very sloppily screwed into place. So I would not be surprised if this thing's output has probably been shorted who knows how many times. There is definitely no output on this thing whatsoever. hums fairly loudly when you turn it on, but maybe that's just the cheapness of the transformer. Which brings me to, I think this is item number three now. Check out the wiring coming into and going out of this transformer. If you've ever been inside a cheap earphone or a cheap pair of stereo earphones, you'll have seen wiring like this. These wires are um, actually varnished to keep them from shorting against anything. And that's all in the world that's been done here. And that's true on both the primary and secondary sides of this transformer. Frankly, for at least the primary side, I've, I'd have expected to see fully insulated wires. So that's kind of hilarious. Item number four, this right here, this component, was uh, touching the body of this big capacitor. Now, it looks to be insulated with some kind of plastic wrap, so I'm not sure that makes much of a difference, but I definitely got that so it's no longer touching anything. Down here we have a combined, uh, this is this will be two diodes most likely in one package and that provides your rectification. This is a little neon lamp that still works. I don't know what these things are, I guess they're just heat shrink tubing that's been cut to fit. I suppose that's soldered together underneath there, but that's really kind of, uh, again, kind of cheap. And there is no regulator I see in this. There's just the, the rectifier, the capacitor, a couple other pieces and then this transistor, this power transistor back here, which is a Motorola 2N6576 dated the 52nd week of 1981. So this was probably sold sometime in 1982, early 1982. Unfortunately, not later 1982, because later in 1982 a really good thing happened. But I digress. Um, got the power switch on the front here, just like you'd expect to have really about the only thing that's done right here and, and I would have expected to see if not a fuse at least a circuit breaker inside this thing some kind of either push to reset or automatic self resetting breaker and like I say there's nothing so I presume that nothing good happens when you short the output of this thing and I suspect that's what finally killed it I my guess is that either one or both of those diodes have failed or this transistor has been zorched by having the output shorted I don't think the transformer's bad, but I don't know. I haven't taken, I haven't done anything other than take the cover off of it right now. They did do one thing right. I will give them this. The uh, the transistor is actually socketed. It's kind of a crude arrangement on this little. I would guess that's a phenolic wafer there, and it is actually socketed, so a person can undo these two square drive screws on the back here and actually pop that thing out and test it, which is probably the next thing I'm going to do. Because if I had to guess, if I had to say which was going to give up the ghost first, a transistor or a set of uh, rectifier diodes, my guess would be that the magic smoke is going to come out of the transistor first. But it really could be a toss-up. Anyway, I just thought the design of this thing was uh, too simple. Hilarious, in other words. 
Not sure what the designers were thinking, but I thought I'd share it with you.